We have one more molecule that we're going to look at combined, IR, mass spec, proton NMR, carbon NMR. Um, this is a really intense IR. Like, there's a lot of stuff going on here. So we're going to begin by just crossing off uh, everything in the fingerprint region to the right of the 1500. We don't want to pay any attention to that at all because we've got enough stuff to look at. We've got a 3000 line right here. I don't know if we should be paying attention to these peaks right here or not. Um, they're pretty small. I'm not really sure what to make of them. This stunted area does make me think that we have a benzene ring. Um, we do have peaks that show that we've got possibly a carbon 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 double bond as well. This is definitely a carbon oxygen double bond. There's just a lot of stuff going on here. Uh, I think we need to go down to the mass spec, see if we can get some hints about this. For our mass spec, here is our M plus peak right there. That looks like it's at 55, 60, 164. 55, 60, 164. 164. Let's see if we can come up with a molecular formula. And according to our IR, it looks like we might be expecting an HDI of five, four for the benzene ring plus another one for the carbon oxygen double bond. But again, that's just a it's a difficult, um, difficult IR. So we know we have an oxygen atom. We're gonna go 164 minus 16 for the oxygen atom is 148. Divide that by 13 for the number of carbon atoms, 11.38. So we'll go with 11 carbons. Let's get the number of hydrogen atoms, 164 minus 16 minus 12 times those 11 carbon atoms is 16 hydrogen. So that gives us C11H16O. Let's calculate an HDI on that. That's so many carbon atoms. 11 carbon atoms times 2 is 22, plus 2 is 24, minus the 16 hydrogen atoms is 8, divided by 2 is 4. That doesn't feel right. Uh, first of all, that's just a lot of carbon atoms. Second of all, that's an HDI of four, and that's really not what I'm expecting. I'm expecting a higher HDI, so it looks like we've got something funny going on here. Let's go look at our, um, let's go look at our NMR and see if we can get a hint about how many hydrogens we're expecting to see. That is definitely not sixteen hydrogens. <laughs> Um, that's two, four, six, twelve hydrogen atoms, way less than 16. Um, we do have some further confirmation of the benzene ring. These two uh, and two hydrogen atoms in the area of seven parts per million, that does tell us we have a benzene ring. So we are correct about that. So we actually only have 12 hydrogen atoms. Let's go back and um, make a note that we should only have 12 hydrogens and see if we can fix this formula. Uh, if you watched the previous video, so in the previous video, we had a similar situation where the, the molecular formula came out not right, looks okay, you know, an HDI of four isn't weird, but the, we know that it's probably not right because we sh are expecting an HDI of five. Um, so we've got to be really careful with, with these molecular formulas and really using the HDI wisely. In the previous um, problem, we actually had two oxygen atoms in the molecule, even though we could only see one of them. And so let's consider that possibility for this one again, because that worked out really well for us last time. So let's consider instead of having one oxygen atom, we have two. Again, could be an ester, this sort of a thing. So let's, let's recalculate our molecular formula with the option, with the possibility that we have two oxygen atoms. 164 minus 32 is 102. Nope, that's not right. <laughs> is 132. Use the rule of 13 on this. Is 10 carbon atoms. That's still a lot of carbon atoms. 
Let's come up with the number of hydrogens, 164 minus the oxygen atoms, minus 10 times 12 for the carbon atoms. 164 minus 32 minus 120 is 12 hydrogens, which is consistent with what we saw in the, in the proton NMR. C10H12O2, let's calculate that HDI. If it's at least five, then we're gonna assume this is correct. 10 times two is 20 plus two is 22 minus the 12 hydrogen that we have is 10 divided by two is five. So that must be what it is. C10H12O2 with an HDI of five, a benzene ring and an ester. Let's go take a look at our NMR. I already forgot the formula. C10H12O2, C10H12O2 with a benzene ring and an ester. So here again, um, we have integrals. We don't have the splitting written down, but these all look like singlets. So that's gonna be pretty helpful in, in terms of us figuring out how this molecule is put together. Let's go ahead and draw those fragments. We have a CH3 that has no neighbors at all. We have a CH2 that has no neighbors at all. And then we have another CH3 with no neighbors. These are the peaks that correspond to the protons that are on the benzene ring. And that particular pattern that we see there is pretty useful. And notice that we've got two and two. When we have a pattern like that, it typically means that we have, obviously we have four hydrogen on the benzene and they're split like this, like there's symmetry down the middle of the, the benzene ring and there's two and then there's another two that are identical to each other. So how are we gonna put all of this together and especially knowing that we need to fit this um, ester group in the molecule somewhere? We could just do some, just kind of doing some guess and check. First of all, we know that we cannot be connecting one of these CH2s to one of the CH3s because there's no splitting at all. So no matter what, whatever we do, we can't stick one of the CH2s onto one of these CH3s directly um, because if we were to do that, then there would be splitting. These wouldn't be singlets. Let's, um, let's just stick... Let's just begin. We know that we know that one of these CH3s and the other CH3 have to be at the end of either side of this benzene ring like that. So I'm just going to kind of draw them out here and then I'll move them closer when it's time. We know that they have to be out here. We also know that we can't put the CH2 directly on either one of these groups. So that means that the CH2 group needs to be attached to the benzene ring and there needs to be something in the middle that keeps that CH2 group away from the CH3. And that could be our ester group right here, this thing. So we could squeeze that in like that. Um, need to make myself a little bit more room for the oxygen like that. And then that means that this one could just be directly attached. So this right here seems like a pretty reasonable molecule. And looking at the carbon NMR, we should expect to see one, two, three, four peaks plus the benzene peaks. One, two, three, four plus our benzenes right here. So that, that looks pretty good. I'm happy with that. Um, the actually, no more that I look at it, am I happy with this? I think I am happy with this. One thing that I'm not sure, like I don't know how we could or couldn't tell, um, would be like, what if it isn't an ester group? What if it's just a ketone and then like an ether like that? And, and I'm not sure how we would be able to tell or not tell if that were the case. Um, I think that it, it could be either way. But I think that the ester group is more common. Having the oxygens together is more common. So I'm going to go with this structure as being accurate.